Welcome and welcome back to Maison de Chatillon. My name is Michaela, and today I have a very exciting video for you. We are going to be talking about men's shoes, but more specifically, I'm going to be showing you the absolutely preposterously vast collection by Erich Michelle, who was gracious enough to let me borrow these gorgeous shoes for this video. And when I say gorgeous, I'm not just talking about looks. These shoes are well-made, handcrafted, designed by true artisans who are passionate about what they do. So I'm very excited. And today's collection ranges from pricing about $300 US dollars to I think about 2000. So we have a pretty good range here. If you are in the market for high quality men's shoes, we have casual options in this video. We have uh, also very formal options. So there's something for everybody. Though this video may be specifically talking about men's shoes, this video is actually for anybody who loves to have an up-close look at nice things, beautiful things, or if you're just generally interested in learning about good shoe brands because it's something worth knowing, then this video is worth the watch. If you are truly amazing, you will stick around to the end because I have a very special prize for one lucky person and I'll be revealing that at the end of this video, towards the end of this video. So. Do not click off. First, let's start with something very special from France, Cortés. Pierre Corté was an esteemed member of the specialized artisans guild known as the Compagnon du Devoir, translating to the Duty Companion. This dates back to the Middle Ages. Monsieur Pierre Corté did his Tour de France studying under other renowned advanced shoemakers. Cortés are handcrafted in France, which is actually incredibly expensive compared to Italy, Spain, and even Portugal. My first pair here is an Arca. These are derbies made in calf leather with the color is a Lee de Vaughan patina. So these are stunning. If you can see, we have this absolutely gorgeous, almost wine stain color with a bit of a, a gradient, if you can tell here. These are French, so these have a slightly elongated look. Not as elongated as Italian shoes, but still, I really do love this sleek, long look. You'll notice with English shoes, they're a little bit shorter, they're a little more, I don't know if you could say structured, but yeah, these are so elegant. As you can see, we only have two eyelets instead of many, so this actually looks much more formal than a typical derby. And I think that's just a very inspired design by Corte. I really appreciate that. I think it's such a great way to elevate something that's meant to be a little more casual. Now let's move on to my next beauty here. My next pair are the is another Arca. These are monk straps. This is in a custom uh, burgundy Lee Devon color. These are going to be more casual than my first pair here. And it's just because of these buckles, but I'm not gonna lie. If I saw a man dressed to the nines and he had these on, I would not even think twice. And the color, if you can just take a look at that up close, this custom Bordeaux Lee de Vaughan, it's stunning. I honestly need a lip color in these. I need a dress in this color. Do I sound nutty? Do I sound crazy? Maybe I am, but if you could see these in person, I think you would understand where I'm coming from. Next we have honestly the same pair. These are another um, Arca Monk Strap. This is just another beautiful color here. I'll show you a little bit closer. No, these ones are actually not the same. These are another pair of Arca Monk Straps, but this is a custom deep dark Le Devon. This, I would say, due to just the shaping, the structure at the front, the stitching on the top, if you can see that, this is casual or formal. As I was saying with the other ones, you could wear them formally, but I would say these it would look a little more fitted with a suit, a proper suit if you're going out. So these do have some wear on the bottom, but I just want you to see every single aspect of these shoes is flawless. There is no glue, there is no mistakes. This is made by hand and every single thing is intentional and you have to understand Shoes that are made like this, as long as you know how to take care of them, use a shoe tree. Gentlemen, use a shoe tree. As long as you know how to take care of them, these will last you forever. This is worth the investment. And I have to say, that is my opinion on Cortez. I think these are just absolutely delectable. I would not recommend purchasing Cortez if you are not somebody who, you don't have to enjoy it, but 
is very um, conscientious about the process of putting your shoes away when you're finished after your night out. These are not just shoes, these are works of art and they deserve to be treated with care and with Dare I say love? I'm gonna say love. Next, we have the Van Huyl Monk Strap. This is a custom uh, Lee Devon patina with a touch of Parisian flamboyance, I would say. These may look black, but I want you to zoom in here. Look up close, especially towards the tip. Do you see this? We have this gorgeous, like we said, Von, right? We have a little bit of this tip of wine absolutely stunning this looks like something that a james bond villain a good one would wear because bond may be the hero that we all root for the bond villain doesn't mind spending money on things that are just ludicrous inappropriate offensively vulgarly expensive and exquisite here we have the exciting can blue suede bit loafer we have the classic double c corte hardware on the front these are so chic yes they are loud but they're still refined they're still made in the most quality that you could possibly ask for these bit loafers are just one of those things that any man whose dual personality may be a dandy these are something you need to add to your collection Sinkbega tailors have betrayed you. If this is the best your tailors can do, it would serve you better to send them to the guillotine. So these can specifically are Blake stitched and they are handcrafted in Italy. One thing to note about Corte is that these are all crafted with good year welded construction. So as I was saying, quality. Pricing for the Cortes shown here range anywhere from 2100 to 2500 US dollars aside from the loafers which are just 1500 US dollars. Although rather dire in terms of price, Cortes are some of the best shoes in the world alongside Ubersi. Now we will travel across the channel, over the channel, to the Palette Archipelago in the North Sea, Great Britain to be precise, and let's take a visit to the legendary Crockett and Jones in Northampton. Let's start with the Tetbury. This is a chuck -a boot in black wax calf. These are sleek, these are cool, and these are a little more reasonably priced than the Cortes. I'm afraid once you put those Cortes on, your addiction will begin and it's going to cost you a lot. So perhaps let's take a look at these very cool, slick shoes. Absolutely elegant. I mean, if you're looking for a black shoe, why not wear what Bond wore? Next we have the Camberley. These are a double monk strap, also in calf black with a toe cap. You can see that here. These were also to be seen in Skyfall and Spectre. What I like about these is that they are, you know, at first glance, a very simple black cool shoe. But when you look at the details up close, you have this gorgeous across the toe stitching, which is what they're calling a toe cap. And you have the details of the monk strap. And these shoes are sturdy. These are heavy shoes. These are not cheaply made products. Absolutely gorgeous. And next I have these exact same Camberleys, but these ones are in cognac brown, which it is really good and important to have a few pairs of brown shoes. You can't always wear black shoes. In fact, I think black shoes, I'm not going to get into that. I'm not going to get into that. It's too, too complicated, but brown shoes are smart. These are the kind of shoes that you can wear with a casual, cool outfit. If you want to upgrade your typical denim and leather jacket look, something like this is just going to make it way sexier. Here we have the Crockett and Jones Isla. These are in dark brown and scotch grain. These are a full bro derby with a wing tip. And I will show you the details here. Do you see that gorgeous stitching? This is just such a nice detail. These are very structured, sturdy, urban outdoor boots, very generously fitting. These are the perfect boots to be wearing when you want to look effortlessly cool while you are dispatching the incompetent henchmen sniffing around the Aston. Next, we have the Sky. These are another full brogue derby boot and chestnut burnished calf. Absolutely stunning. This is country cool at its finest. You can probably see the detailing of the wingtip a little better here on these due to the contrast. These are a 10 out of 10 British 
country cool. Next we have the North Coat. These are a straight cap toe derby and brown wax calf. Now these beloved boots should really be a staple in every gentleman's wardrobe because they can be dressed up a little bit for smart cocktail attire or they can be dressed a bit more casually and perhaps a Japanese or British salvage denim. Really cool, simple. Next we have the Coniston. These are another derby. These are in tan scotch grain. They're a bit plain. That's not a bad thing though. By plain, I mean they didn't do too much with them. They're very simple and they're very light. They're lighter than probably they're appearing on the camera, um, which is a kind of interesting thing. They're completely well made though, so don't get me wrong. Just because these are not my number one favorite, I've just been spoiled by seeing so many absolutely stunning and interesting designs that yeah, these might look a little simple, but there's nothing wrong with them. They're still absolutely gorgeous. The pricing for these Crockett and Jones boots have ranged anywhere from 600 US dollars to a thousand probably. So these are actually not terribly bad in the grand scheme of things. Your wallet won't cry quite as much as when you um, shop for Corte. I think the Tetbury's, the Camberley's, and the Islas are perfect for beating a baddie on a high-speed reel or in a Highland castle. I actually do prefer the Bond villains. It's like an Adolfo Celli, a Kurt Jurgens, or even a Sean Bean good old Sharpie. Oh my word, what a surprise. Sharpie. Not dead yet. Remember, the Bond villains were never actually defeated by Bond. The eventual demise was always their own ego. Now to the city of the Epicene, Seattle. Justin Fitzpatrick, also known as the Shoe Snob, who was originally from Seattle, quickly realized that there were no beautiful, well-made shoes anywhere to be found in the entire city. Having worked at Nordstrom's flagship store years ago, Justin found it unfathomable that Nordstrom didn't carry even one stylish pair of men's dress shoes, not even one. Well, fortunately for us, Justin had the good sense to leave the vulgar, androgynous city of Seattle and to open up his own beautiful boutique in New York. Originally relocating to Florence, Justin became an apprentice to the late great shoemaker Stefano Bemer and later practiced within the atelier of Gaziano and Gerling in London, eventually moving on to Gives and Hawks number one on Savile Row. Justin honed his craft to near perfection. Please take the time to visit his wonderful channel and blog, The Shoe Snob, where he does something very unique, as many have stated before, that he actually reviews many other shoe brands and talks about his genuine opinions. And he has his own brand, right? So that's always a little risky. And I like I like his um, boldness there. I think that's cool. The link will, of course, be in the description if you'd like to see his channel. Now for the shoes. The first beauty I have here is the Wedgwood Reduce and these are in gold museum calf grain. These are so cool. These have a very unique narrow toe as you can see here and for the ruggedness of the boot I mean these look rather sporty in my opinion. Having this narrow toe is such a unique design and Justin Fitzpatrick is well known for taking bold choices with his design. Having a huge collection of of different shoes, styles, and designs. There is something for absolutely everybody here in every taste. Unless, of course, your taste is bad, then no, there's nothing for you. With this absolute stunning artistic structure, these can truly be dressed up, preferably dressed up. Next, we have the David in black half and black suede. These are a classic Balmoral style dress brogue and these present a bit more of a stylish look. This elegant chisel toe is one of the hallmarks of Justin's taste. Far too cool for Seattle. We have here, these are the beautiful Klee Elam and Mocha Suede. The classically refined style derby is refined enough to wear with either chinos or you could dress it down with denim. I would love to say that these are tough enough for the rain sodden streets of Seattle. However, the rain is the least of your concerns in this city. Okay, okay, enough. I'll stop. I'll stop. Um, all of these shoes are good year welted, so extremely structurally sound, well made. Pricing for these beautiful shoes range anywhere from 300 to 600, so these are even more budget friendly if that's something that you're thinking about. But I cannot stress this enough. You need to check out Justin Fitzpatrick's line of shoes. Absolutely breathtaking. And to me, it's really special that this man 
came from where I live because he had big dreams, he had a passion, and he didn't just let that die out. I do have a couple more absolutely stunning pairs of shoes to show you gentlemen, but before I do, I want to announce the prize that will be in the prize giveaway I'm doing. I've never done a giveaway before, so it's going to be total amateur hours, so bear with me, but I'm gonna do it my way. I'm not doing a humongous raffle or anything like that but it's gonna be a little more personal. What I'm giving away to one special gentleman is Hugo Jacquemet's The Parisian Gentleman, and not the ring light that you're seeing. This book is absolutely stunning, full of high quality photographs of everything that you need to know to become a Parisian gentleman, Le Gentilhomme Parisien. So this is my copy, this is the limited edition. Obviously it's much larger in size and it's been loved. This one has never been opened. I want to show you what you can expect in this stunning book that will inspire and motivate you to dress better, to live a more elegant life, which is what Satorio Talks Hugo Giacome is all about. This book is absolutely full of so much information, so many beautiful brands, fabrics, I can't even begin to tell you. What I'll have you do is if you'd like to enter to win this book, comment down below why you would like to read The Parisian Gentleman and have your own copy. Let me know what it would mean to you. The opportunity to win the book will be available for 10 days after this video is released, so it won't be very long before I pick somebody, and then I will contact you and we'll collaborate through there, okay? I have two more pairs of shoes. These are both made in France. They are not the same brand. We are starting here with Coulanco Paris. These are one cut 1827 in a pomerol color. This is a whole cut shoe, okay? This is one of the most difficult types of shoes to make with little to no room for error. We have Blake stitching construction with closed channel stitching. As with most French shoes, these are pretty simple, but they are elegant and refined. These are elongated, but not too elongated. Sleek, very cool, very smart. And look at this, look at this gradients. This is something that always gets to me with these shoes. It's one of those things where the more you look at it, the more beautiful it becomes. The pricing for this brand ranges usually between 600 to about 700 and 50 US dollars. Now let's make a stylistic statement with our latest edition. Here we have the Alton Bottier, specifically the Kubilai boots with the Samarit sole with its dominating Turkish origins. You could see Shibiana in these boots. The color is classified as a Bordeaux or Le Devon. What can I possibly say about these beautiful daring boots? You could go 10 years in North America and never see another pair in the wild, very unique, so cool. These to me are just such a mix, a perfect mix of classy, sleek, and edgy, hardcore. Alton Bautier are patina masters and they are exotic skin craftsmen. I know that sounds a little bit morbid, but you can tell. And I just don't think one pair is enough, even though these ones are quite exciting and new. They have so many absolutely stunning and unique colors and designs and the color is really what brings a lot of attention to the brand because they are daring, not only with their designs and styles as you can see, edgy, daring, interesting, but the colors and the pricing ranges anywhere from 700 to 800 plus US dollars. Thank you so much for joining me in today's video. I know it was a long one, but if I had actually gone through all of the shoes in this collection, these candles would be completely melted and it would take about a week. <laughs> Thank you all again for watching and joining me on this video. Don't forget to leave your comment down below on why you would like to receive the Parisian Gentleman book so you can enter yourself into the drawing. I will contact you if it's you, don't worry. The drawing will be open for 10 days after this video is posted. So thank you again for watching and I will see you all in my next video. I'm surprised, my dear Chauvelin, that you didn't notice their ill-fitting uniforms. But then fashion never was your forte, was it? <laughs>